Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, because I know many of you viewers watch all different times of the day. Thanks for joining us here on See, Here Love. And whether you're on your mobile, your desktop, or your tablet, we're so glad that you've joined us today. And we've got a great show for you. Mm -hmm. Thanks to my incredibly gifted co-host, Joanna and Cheryl. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Glad Hi, to guys. have you here. And we have a special yes. guest. Am Very we, special. Am I incredibly too. gifted as well? I mean, you I said that about this I haven't gone to you, but I, I guess you can receive that too. Anne Mains. <laughs> I'm just waiting <laughs> for the actors. I haven't heard any yet. No. Special <laughs> guest host Anne Mains has Ooh. joined us today Ooh. around the kitchen table. And yeah. it's so good to have you here. Thank you, Mel. Now, I'm just going to gush a little bit about you. Oh, no. Because some people may not know be. you. And if you don't know Anne really... You don't know Anne? Really? Anne is a television host. She's a podcast host, which I've been told by a little birdie is one of the top podcasts in Absolutely. Canada, Christian Canadian podcast, one of the most listened to podcasts. Way to go, girl. Wow, thank you. you heard on Faith Strong today. Uh, Anne is an author. You're an author. You are a national speaker. You're a marriage expert with Heart to Heart Family Ministries. Marriage and Family Ministries. Marriage and Family Ministries. Yep. You're a mom, a wife, and a very proud... Nana. Nana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I know there's some pictures. Gush a little bit about your grandchildren. Twist my arm. Go on. Twist my arm. Okay. Okay. Well, um, Ron and I have been married for this July 7th will be 33 years. Wow. wow. I was Congrats. eight. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We're going to say just that. Just putting yeah. that out there. Yeah. Yeah. I was eight at the time. Yeah. Which, yeah. Anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> uh, we have three children who mm -hmm. are, they'll always be my babies, but they're grown, they're adults yeah. now. And two grandbabies. Jadis is four. Oh, so cute. And Declan is nine months old. Okay. And cute. okay, here are the pictures. Okay. And yeah, I cute. mean, just the, the most adorable children on the planet. <laughs> oh, I mean, the, I most. the most. <laughs> the most. The most. The most. I believe no. it. Yeah, I <laughs> you do. You believe it. Yeah. Huh? Well, on Facebook, you would just, Gush, you're like a gu hashtag well, gushing Nana gushing, all the time. Yeah, that is my hashtag. Yeah. I've I've claimed it, and if you do use hashtag <laughs> gushing Nana, you will see uh, a, a plethora. There's that word. Yeah, plethora. Yeah. of pictures. Thousands of, of my grandbabies. I oh. cannot help myself. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, is that I what happens that. when you become a Nana? Like you it just is. did you gush as much with your ch own children? Well, I mean, this was this was before. Let's let's just say it was a while back. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't have the opportunity to gush quite as much, but. I think there's something different about being a grandma, a nana, whatever you want to call yeah. it, um, that these little lives, I'll, you love your child. Like, I love my daughter. She was my firstborn. She'll be yeah. 31 soon. She is, she's, you know, my introduction into motherhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is her <laughs> baby. And yeah. so my blood flows through my daughter through to these babies. And it's like... And you just, it's its just mm. mind-blowing how much that. you love those babies. babies yeah. yeah. And they're really cute. Well, and that, does, that doesn't hurt. That they're good, so job. good job. Good job, Anne and Ron. They're good job. So adorable. They're yummy. Yeah. Hey, they're yummy. Yeah. Oh, well, hashtag speaking, yummy. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of gushing, I, here's what's really special about having you on the show. Okay. You were our very first woman's, woman's crush. crush. Oh, yes, you guys. You were. And how did you feel about that? Because we gushed a lot about you. We put your picture yeah. up. And I don't think I told you until the morning. I think I either emailed you yeah. or texted you and said, yeah. guess what, you're yeah. our women's crush. How'd you feel about that when we gushed about you? Okay, you guys, seriously, <laughs> you need to meet more people because I <laughs> Women that you could have gushed about more deserving. No. I mean, no. it's just I okay. I think I I you I put on Facebook yeah, you that did. you guys had me in tears. Like seriously, oh. it was it was very sweet. Thank you, thank you for well, saying. Well, I mean, if what you deserve it, you know what God God has gifted each of us individually in different things, mm -hmm. and it's as we you know get out of our own way sometimes we just need to say okay god i'm not going to do what i want to do i'm going to do what you want to do yeah. and then the best stuff happens yeah mm -hmm. and true. so that's that's mm -hmm. basically okay. what he did well, i'm glad you liked our gushing because we did we did thank gush you. a lot about you thank you it she's was... gush worthy <clears throat> yes oh. yes <laughs> please <laughs> please stop stop stop, stop, stop. okay because no, no, there'll no. be a lot of that today no. uh well the reason too and is that see here love um came out and on top of your shoulders of creating Full Circle, yeah. which was a national women's show in Canada that aired for seven years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, thinking of that, that's, you know, we were gushing about that. But I think knowing that you launched and were a pioneer of a woman's show that's never been done on national TV, a Christian woman's show, looking at our show, what would you say maybe 
some advice for our team. I'm looking at Cheryl, Joanne, and me. What would you say as, as, as a bit of advice? Because you were the host. I didn't know you were going to ask me this. Okay. Producer yeah. and executive producer of, of Full Circle. And now well, we had, a lot, we had a good team. Yeah, we did. We had a yeah. really good team yeah. working with us. I mean, Bill Bray was our producer for many yeah. years, and, and he's retired now on the West Coast and just enjoying life. But, yeah. but we had a really good team working with us. What advice would I give you girls? Well, I don't know when we're going to get to this, yeah. but if I, if I didn't go to this, to, to the scripture that we're going to talk about in a second, uh, the advice I would say is to keep your eye on the prize. And what I mean by that is, who is this all about? Because honestly, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you go through all of the pain and the, the stress of hair and makeup and clothes and what you're going to wear. And there's a lot of stuff that yeah. we go through as women mm -hmm. yeah. to be presentable before we, you know, go to, go to work, go to family things, go to the movies, do these kinds of shows. Yeah. And, but the main thing has to always be, yeah, that's good, that's fun. But the main thing is allowing Jesus to speak through us to you, to whoever's watching, whoever, because it, there's no accident that you're watching right now. Mm -hmm. That's God right. has obviously brought you to your phone, your laptop, your whatever, mm -hmm. to see this program, yeah. because what's going to be said in this program can be life-changing for you. And so as you girls just continue to prepare every single program, it has different flavors, it has different guests, mm -hmm. it has fun, it has yeah. shallow, silly stuff, it has deep um, heartbreaking, you know, mm -hmm. cry yourself to sleep stuff, I'm sure, because we're all on the same journey, mm -hmm. um, to remember that really it's all about Jesus and about what He wants to do and say through you, which, yeah. you know, we had a good prayer time before we even <laughs> came here to the studio, and it's obvious that you guys already get that. Yeah. But sometimes I guess it's good to be reminded. Yeah, no, that's good. I think that's, you know, something that we can, you know, we can take, and mm -hmm. I think from someone who's done it and been in television for as long as you have, it's good for you to you know, share some of your wisdom and advice to us. Mm -hmm. Well, That's I think awesome. we all have a lot of wisdom that we can share yeah. with each other. So I'm just thank you, thank you for asking. Yeah, no, awesome. Thank you. Well, it is Motivational Monday. Okay. I'm glad yes. that you've joined okay. us. And that was already motivational. And the show it is was. over. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and we're done for today. No, no. And that's all. Um, <laughs> always a Motivational Monday. And we represent, we bring a uh, scripture verse that mm. is, you know, it's one that we can, you know, talk about, think about, and challenge our viewers and ourselves, yeah. especially as we start the week. Mm -hmm. And I know that this verse today, it's Romans 12, 1 to 2, mm -hmm. and it's one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. And I know that we're excited to unpack and learn from it. Mm -hmm. And I know Cheryl has got it on. You're going to and read it on to our, us. On our amazing New Life app, <laughs> which we love so much, which yeah. we hope you are downloading from our website mm -hmm. uh, and joining us in these times of, uh, of devotion. So Romans 12, 1 to 2 says... And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into mm -hmm. a new person mm -hmm. by changing the way you think. Mm -hmm. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Oh, mm -hmm. Such a good verse. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Now, Anne, I know you also have it in the message translation. Do yes. you want to just read that off and share that and so we can get a, another flavor for it? Absolutely. I love the way Eugene Peterson just paraphrased all of that and kind of brought it down to mm -hmm. earth for us today. So this is what he says, starting with verse 1. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, you're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you mm. could do for Him. And then this is where the rubber meets the road. I love this part. He says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Mm -hmm. Instead, mm. fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. So great. Good okay. stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Joanna, when you hear this, so there's the two different translations, um, what are your initial thoughts? Maybe context or your, your initial thoughts when you hear that verse? Well, it's one of my favorite verses. I had honestly, I didn't, didn't know. I had no didn't idea. Know. So well, look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's one of those those scriptures for me that 
it summarizes so much of Christian life mm -hmm. uh, all in two neat little verses. And so it's very meaningful to me personally. It's, it feels like it's probably all of our story. Like when we read this, we're like, oh, that's it. That's what it is. Yeah. It, and so I love, you know, how Romans summarizes it. The whole book of Romans we should read regularly because it's, it's so packed full of all kinds of things uh, that we need to know in our Christian walk. But, but it's this idea of transformation through mm -hmm. God's power, not mm -hmm. our own. Mm -hmm. Like the religiousness is us being good for God. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. flips upside down and we're reminded again in this scripture that like, let God do the work. Let mm -hmm. him take mm -hmm. your normal every day, you're mm -hmm. eating, you're sleeping, you're walking around life mm -hmm. and let him transform you. Mm -hmm. And and it's when we let go yeah. that we actually are able to receive mm -hmm. um, that kind of transformation. And so I, I remember there was this mo moment in my life when I was a university student and it's an older song now, but it was a, the band Jars of Clay. Oh, and yes. there's this song Love called them. Worlds Apart. Yes. Mm. Love that and, song. and it was this moment in my life of becoming an adult and and wrestling mm -hmm. through the religiousness of my own life. Mm -hmm. And but, I mean, the duty and the sense of trying to do it on my own and mm -hmm. doing it out of religious obligation. And, and it's this, there's this line in the song World Apart, cause all, it's something like, cause all I am and all you are, like all you are God mm -hmm. are worlds apart. Mm -hmm. And then the song is like, yeah. you have to take my world apart mm -hmm. in order to make me who you want mm -hmm. me to be. Yeah. And it was this this moment in personal devotional time with mm -hmm. the Lord that this song struck me. And it was related to Romans 12 for me. This idea that like who we are is worlds apart from who mm -hmm. God is. Mm -hmm. And it's he who transforms every aspect of mm -hmm. our life if yeah. we let him. Yeah. Um, and he makes us like him. But it's this, it's, we have to come to the point where we say we have to like lay down this holy sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Like it's a laying mm -hmm. down because we cannot do it on our own. That's entirely the point. The mm -hmm. best thing yeah. we can do for God is let him do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good because we're always wanting to control yeah. and, and, and do it ourselves. Oh, that's, that's actually really comforting. Like on a Monday to say, ugh, oh, because we're just striving and always trying to do. Yeah. We're saying, let God do it. Yeah, like when striving cease, right? Yeah. When, yeah. when yes. we finally stop trying so hard mm. uh, and he does it. I yeah, like the way Cheryl's version said it where it talks about renewing your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a big part of what you're saying, Joanna, is that we have to kind of change the way we think about things. Yeah. Brain and transplant. Exactly. Yeah. And that can only <laughs> really? happen yeah. as we allow God by His Holy Spirit into our thinking yeah. and saying, okay, God, turn me away from all the, the trash thinking I've been doing about myself, about yeah, we do a lot the situation of that too. I'm in right mm -hmm. now, yeah. and help yeah. me to turn my thinking so that I think your thoughts, and, and that becomes more natural for me. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Cheryl, what do you think? You're like, mm-hmm, I'm seeing 30, the eyes going. Yeah, just the 30-second. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm really gleaning a challenge from the scripture, mm. um, particularly coming from the piece of not fitting into the culture. Mm -hmm, there is such yeah. a pressure for us as believers in what we think is the way to reach people uh, is to be like them in every way and, mm -hmm. and right there in the dirt. And that is that is true to a point, uh, but it's talking about behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we how do we make ourselves uh, distinguished and set apart? If our behavior is equally as sort of mm -hmm. rancid and mm -hmm. needs transforming as the other mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love this because it's a challenge to us that there is a way to be among, like Jesus did it in the most perfect way, to be among the people, but yet to somehow mm -hmm. intellectually and spiritually be different. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just want to challenge people that it's not religion that sets us apart, it is the relationship mm -hmm. and the relationship brings the thinking. Mm -hmm. So I, I think differently. I think that I'm a child of God, therefore my, it, that brings a whole now duty of action. I'm a child of God, would I be doing this? Mm -hmm. Would I smoke weed with you to win you? Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? because I'm relating yeah. to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Pass me. And yeah. do we not hear people saying like I've, I'm going into the clubs and I'm doing all this behavior because I'm trying to sort of get to their level? <laughs> yeah, how's that working? Yeah, how's that working? <laughs> exactly. What would Dr. Phil say? How's that working? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's this, good. There's these stats that have come out recently about churches in Canada that are growing versus shrinking, and it was a secular study. It was a it was a secular university, mm -hmm. and in short, the churches that are more conservative in their theology, I'd say more traditional. It doesn't matter about the style of the singing and if they have pews or mm -hmm. movie theater seats, it doesn't really matter. Right. But it was about what they teach. Is it more, I would call, traditional Christian teaching or is it becoming more sort of 
fitting into the culture mm -hmm. and a little bit too soft. Yeah. Um, they find that the churches who are more traditional in their teaching are the churches that are growing. Mm -hmm. It's not wow. the churches that are trying to fit in and conform to the world. Mm -hmm. It's the ones who are setting themselves apart. I heard a saying that young people today want the God of their grandparents, not necessarily the God mm. of their parents. Mm, I like that. Huh. They want the God that their grandparents trusted in, the one who was loving, yes, but who had had you know barriers that yeah. you had to live your life within. Because sometimes the parents, and I would be in that generation, would be so lenient and lax, and well, you discover whatever you want, and whatever you think God is is good for you. And mm -hmm. that is, that is mm -hmm. you know, to our detriment as parents. Mm -hmm. We've got to stand firm and say, no, God's word doesn't change. Yeah. You know, what, what I love about this is in the context, it was the Apostle Paul writing to the church in an imperialistic Roman Empire. So he's actually writing to believers. And mm -hmm. he's like, here's the deal. You know Jesus, then you have a new life with him and new life in him. And so that's transformative. Your, your behavior needs to be different. Right, and so it's actually for anybody who is, you know, and for myself, I, I always have to go back to this scripture. Say, you know, as a person who follows Jesus, there is something that has to set me apart. I, I'm not of the world. It's different. The Holy Spirit's in me, and I and I act accordingly. The other thing with that comes that then you're changing things. And that's what we said, the way you look at people, the way you make choices and decisions. Mm -hmm. But in that too, what I find fascinating about this verse is that Paul was writing to the church that was living under a very cruel Roman Empire. And he was saying, the way that we look at power and how mm. they define power then was how the Roman Empire defined it, power and control. But the way of Jesus is love and freedom and peace and justice. So as you are not conforming to the world, you're also though living this countercultural way of love, justice, you know, freedom, wholeness that the world desperately needs to see and, and be a part of. Because mm -hmm. it, it was this funny thing, they're looking at the church and the church is like trying to figure out their way of how to live, mm -hmm. but also they're, they're realizing that they're under this extreme power and control, but that's not true power. You know, power mm -hmm. is laying it down mm -hmm. and loving those. And, and that's, a, that's an interesting thing for me too, because sometimes I am that kind of woman who wants control and power to control others and my own life. And yet the call is Jesus was no, lay down your life, mm -hmm. live in the selfless way, be countercultural. And it's not about power and control, Melinda, it's about love. Mm -hmm. and, and service. And so this one always gets me because like, when I read it through in my quiet time, like, there's so many good things that yeah. are challenging me. Mm -hmm. I'm not overwhelmed by it. It's just a good reminder as a follow of Jesus. Yeah. About I know it, we're right? almost out of time, but to your point, you made a really good point, and I just want to pick that up just really quickly, is when you were talking about the culture, society, needing something from us. I think, and, and we you know try to give them what we can, we want to be a part of them, but we want to bring, if we live a life completely surrendered to God, inviting His Holy Spirit in on a daily basis, and that's hard to do because that becomes a habit thing that we've got to develop and, and yielding our will. But if we do that, mm -hmm. then society, culture will see in us everything they need. And mm -hmm. they will see what God is doing in us. And they will mm -hmm. be attracted to that. They will be drawn to that. We won't have to push an agenda. Yeah. We yeah. will say this is this is a life live. completely yeah. surrendered to God, attractive. And, yeah, it is attractive. and the fruit of the Holy Spirit will flow through you. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. Takeaways. I mean, I'm like whatever time, and and poor Elizabeth, who's our production assistant, is giving me <laughs> time count just so that you know behind the scenes. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> Elizabeth, yeah. I see you. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> we are, we are. I'm watching you. But, take but I, I, th I think takeaways is important, and we can talk a little bit more because I think this is really important for not only us but for the, our viewers and listeners. But what are some of the takeaways that you want to just share that that are something that you want to to yeah. work out this week for yourself personally or for our viewers. Um, there was a viral viral video that went out, uh, and it's 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 in the millions and millions of hits. It's I, mm. I won't say the name. It's a very well known out there rap star was on the stage in the middle of a concert, and he shredded the church. And what he said is, "We need you to stay who you are." It's interesting. I'll, mm. I'll send that to you after. Mm -hmm. We need the church to be the church. Mm. And it was interesting because he's on a journey and I think he has gone to different places where they're like, you can, oh, you know, we'll still let you do this and you can still do that. And he's like, no, I want the church that, as you said, mm -hmm. my grandparents that I've known from before. Mm -hmm. And the church is so desperately trying to be relevant. Mm -hmm. But relevant is what's needed. Relevant is not matching. Mm -hmm. And so what's needed is for the church to be a hospital. 
mm -hmm. for the church to be a place of, of yeah. sanctuary and safety to be a light in the darkness, mm -hmm. not to be a buddy when I'm drinking and falling down and saying, it's okay, yeah, we're right here with you, and oh, there's my youth pastor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it, the church needs to be relevant, but what is, I think we're missing what, what we think relevant hmm. really is. That's a yeah. good point. That's a it's good a heavy point. thought, but. Really no, yeah. no, I get point. that, because yeah. there, it, that's a real struggle for people, because mm -hmm. we found this like, sort of freedom in Christ, which means we can just do whatever we want, as we follow Jesus, yeah. but what you're yeah. saying is, yeah. whoa, yeah. there's gotta be yeah. that difference. What do we define What do we define? Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. That's a really good thought. Yeah. And what are, you, what are you thinking? Well, just, I, I, till you just made me think this, whose opinion matters most to us? Are we living our lives because we want the world, the world meaning, people who don't know um, Jesus in a personal way, we want them to like us? Mm -hmm. We want them to think, oh, she's cool. Yeah, she's got it going on, or their their show is really good because, because of whatever. We want them to like us, or do we want to please God? Mm. Do we want to say, God, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I want to be able to stand before you, oh God, and not be embarrassed or ashamed or having to make excuses for anything I said or did today mm -hmm. in, in hopes of winning people to you. No, God's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. You know, He can use us right where we are. He can speak through us right where we are to those people who are watching or, or, or listening or are part of our day without us going to a place that he doesn't want us to go. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. literally, figuratively, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good. Thanks, Sam. Joanna, some takeaways. Yeah, I just, again, we are, we're all saying the mm -hmm. same things, but just mm -hmm. that it's attractive, that mm -hmm. this kind of life, mm -hmm. as God transforms us, is attractive. And it's an attractive, it's attractive in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's uh, attractive in not like, you know, I, I, uh, unlike some of you, I actually don't really like the hair and the makeup stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, that stuff makes me anxious. I'm not into it. But you love doing this stuff yeah. for like when we get ready for the show. You I, know what? If you I, hang I, around Melinda long enough, <laughs> it's going to rub off. You know, I'd, I'd, much, I'd much rather just like put on a ball cap and <laughs> put on my Reeboks. But, but uh, this kind of attractiveness really does attract yeah. me. That's yeah. the kind of thing yeah. I'm actually interested in being mm -hmm. more like. I love that. Well, I think just for me, you know, what I said before, this sense of countercultural um, way of living, yeah. um, this way of that I have to every day remember that as a follower of Jesus, then I am different yeah. and that it is different from, from the world, that, you know, mm -hmm. transformation is that. And so, I mean, and it's good. As somebody who's been a Christian for so long, I, I don't, I've not arrived. It's an everyday choice mm -hmm. to choose Absolutely. what's good. And I think yeah. that's my encouragement is that we're all in it, like mm -hmm. together. It's an, it's not just like you just go into it and go, okay, great, I've got it, I know it. It's a choice. I have to choose. And I don't choose well all the time. You know, sometimes I'm like, man, that was a bad choice. And other times I'm like, that was a really good choice. I made, <laughs> I made a really good decision. So I, but I also know that I live under this grace of God that he's just with me. Mm -hmm. And, he, and he, I hear him a lot. And he's just like, okay, mom, not, a, not the best choice. Mm -hmm. And let's carry on and let's make some better choices, yeah. you know? So I'm encouraged yeah. by that. That's, that's why I love him so much. Um, and so I think that's my encouragement, my takeaway, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it's good because you can journey along with girlfriends who I learn a lot from as we do these Motivational yeah. Mondays. And, and, and thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. That's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. No wonder it's all of our favorite verses. I didn't know it was your favorite mm -hmm. either. Yeah, I knew it was Anne's, but I didn't know it was... Um, yeah favorite and I'm I know we're gonna blog do some blog posts about this to go further in the discussion so for you viewers if you have some thoughts make sure you go onto our website seeherelove.com which I know you're already on go to the top and says say hello click on that button it has name email and then you can make some notes and we really we read your your notes to us we respond and so thank you so much uh, for your you know response and for sharing vulnerably with us about your journey the other thing too I want to just say is that I know that this discussion, you know, meant a lot to me personally. And I think that if you're watching and you know that there's a girlfriend, your mama, uh, a cousin, a colleague that needs or to be encouraged. Dude. A guy, sorry, I did not mean to exclude you men. Thank you, Joanna. <laughs> but if there's someone that you know that would be really encouraged by this. Um, make sure that you send the link to them. We, we want this show to go out and go around the world. And so we just want you to, you know, like us, like us, follow us mm -hmm. on Facebook and on Instagram, subscribe to YouTube, and just, and just get the word. Take the link and then send it out. Make sure, like what Cheryl was saying, download the New Life Bible app off our website. And, um, you know, here's the thing, too. This is a hard thing for me to say. But to keep our show airing, to have these kinds of conversations around the table, 
we actually need your financial donations. And so if you're encouraged by what we're sharing about the shows and our content, then you can go on our website, look for the big donate button with our big smiling faces, and uh, you can donate there. And we so appreciate it. Many of you have. We're so thankful and grateful for your financial support. Well, on that note, thank you, ladies, for being with us. Thank you. Thank I know, you for having and you're going to be with us on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. A lot of wisdom on Wednesday. That's so we look good. forward Hopefully. to what you're going to share about relationships and marriage. Yes, there's a lot to learn about <laughs> marriage. That's for sure. We're right. going in. Yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, and to you viewers, thank you so much. We will see you on Wednesday. Goodbye.